Hello! In this video, I'm showing you how to replace a pressure vessel inside a Valiant boiler. Now, it doesn't matter what boiler you have, the process to replace a pressure vessel is exactly the same. I'm also going to show you exactly what your pressure vessel does and how it works and what maintenance is needed. Because on annual service, that's something a gas rated engineer would be checking. Now, I'm replacing this pressure vessel because it had become faulty and I'll show you why in the video but the boiler was coming up with F75 on the display. Now, initially I thought F75 is gonna be the pressure sensor, so I replaced that, but it made no difference at all. So I realized it was the pressure vessel that was causing the problem. And it's pretty unusual to get F75 with a pressure vessel fault, but this pressure vessel was so far gone that that's why the F75 was coming up. If you'd like to know more about that F75 fault, then I made a whole load of videos all about that, and you'll find a playlist in the cards above now. And of course, that will cover how to fix the F75 faults, how to replace the pressure sensor, the pump, and of course also this pressure vessel, and also how to fix your pump. So if you want to know more about that, again, check the cards above now, or you can find the individual videos down in the description, along with lots of other help videos. One last important point, to get to the pump, I need to remove the cover of the boiler. When I remove the cover, that will affect combustion of the gas in the main heat exchanger. Because of this, only gas registered engineers should be removing the covers of valiant boilers. In the description below, I've left links to the gas register where you can find a gas registered engineer in the UK. Right, now let's get on with this video. First of all, I'm gonna briefly explain to you exactly what the expansion vessel does to give you a better understanding of how your system operates. So here's a traditional central heating system, We've got radiators downstairs, radiators upstairs, we've got a boiler over here, and then we've got a pipe here coming up which goes to our loft tank, which our tank is our FNE tank, which stands for feed and expansion. Our central heating systems are full of water, and when the boiler comes on, it heats the water up, and when the water is heated, it expands. Here's a little bit of physics for you. When you heat water up, let's say we take it from zero degrees and we take it up to 100 degrees, that's boiling point. When you heat that water up, it will expand by a roughly 4%. This is the way I like to think about it. If I had 100 bottles of water and I heated the water up from zero to 100 degrees, I'd then have an extra four bottles of water. So I would then have 104 bottles of water. Now we're not heating our central heating systems up from zero to 100 degrees. We're more likely going to be heating up from 15 degrees to say 65 degrees. And if we had 100 liters of water in our system, when it's heated, we then say have maybe 102 liters of water. So we'd have an extra two liters of water. And that water needs to go somewhere because water cannot be compressed like air. So that's where the expansion tank and expansion vessel comes in. When our heating comes on, the water is heated, it expands and it expands up into the expansion tank like that. So we then have more water in the tank. And then when the central heating system is turned off, the water cools back down again. And then the water level will drop back down inside the expansion tank like that. But with a lot of modern systems and combination boilers, we don't have an open expansion tank like this. Instead, we have a pressure vessel that may be inside the boiler or it may be outside the boiler. When we no longer have a loft tank, we now call it a sealed system. Now inside the pressure vessel, there is a rubber diaphragm. One side is open to our central heating system and on the other side of the diaphragm is compressed air. So when the boiler comes on and starts to heat up the water, the water expands, it expands into the pressure vessel it pushes against the rubber diaphragm and compresses the air. Then when the system is turned off and the boiler cools down, the compressed air pushes the water back out of the expansion vessel. Now the expansion vessel, which I'm replacing in this video has become faulty and that rubber diaphragm has now got a hole in it like that. And now on the other side of the vessel where there should be compressed air, it is full of water. And of course this will then give you problems. The main one being that the pressure would go sky high every time the boiler comes on. And in the case of this boiler, it was also causing it to trip out with the F75 fault. Now the most common fault which I come across with the pressure vessels is the vessel has lost all its air. So instead of the diaphragm going all the way across, it's now flat like that. And the entire pressure vessel again is full of water. 
and that will create the same scenario again where the pressure will go sky high every time your heating comes on. But in this situation, all I need to do is to recharge the pressure vessel. And I'll show you how I go about doing that in the video. Now, like I said in the introduction, I thought initially this was a pressure sensor fault. So I quickly changed the pressure sensor, but that didn't make a blind bit of difference. The boiler still locked out with F75. So I thought, let's check the pressure vessel. So I removed the cap and I attached my pressure gauge to see exactly how much pressure is in the vessel. You can see as soon as I attach my pressure gauge, you'll see water start dripping out of the connection. Now only air should ever come out of this connection. So as soon as water starts coming out, I know straight away that the pressure vessel is faulty and needs to be replaced. Just to demonstrate that again, if I use my screwdriver and I just push in the valve, as soon as I push it in, water squirts out. So that shows that the pressure vessel is completely full of water. And that's why this boiler is getting the F75 fault. So now I need to remove the pressure vessel. So on the top here, there's a couple of screws which hold the vessel in. And down on the bottom there, there's one nut that needs to be undone. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to turn the boiler off because I don't want the boiler running. But the safest thing to do is always just turn the boiler off from the isolation switch on the wall. I'm then gonna isolate the boiler from the rest of the system. So I use a four millimeter Allen key bit and I put it up into the flow valve. I close that one and then I put it into return valve just over here and close that one like that. So now both flow and return valves are closed. And now I'm gonna use an adjustable spanner and open up one of the drain points on the bottom of the boiler here. So I'm gonna undo this one here on the return valve because this valve is directly underneath the pressure vessel. So I open it up like that and I'm gonna get some water coming out of the boiler and I'll catch that in a bowl. If there's quite a bit of water in the boiler and I need to remove that pressure, then I'll attach a little rubber tube onto the drain valve like that. And then when I open it up, the water will come out as a nice steady stream and won't splash around everywhere. Once all the pressure has been removed from the boiler, I'll then close that drain valve because we shouldn't need to drain any more water off. I can now undo the nut on the bottom of the expansion vessel. So I take my adjustable spanner, I can then loose the nut like that. Once it's loose enough, I can then undo it with my fingers and just let the nut slide down the pipe. I can then give the pipe a bit of a wiggle and just move it away from the thread on the expansion vessel. Now this joint is sealed with a fiber washer and sometimes that fiber washer is stuck on top of the pipe. So I always make sure that I remove the fiber washer because it will be replaced with a new one. So now I need to remove the bracket which holds the expansion vessel in place. Now it's held on with two screws and once that bracket's removed, the expansion vessel will just fall out of the boiler. So now that's one of the screws undone. Now I'm loosening the other screw and I'm gonna hold the bracket because the bracket would just drop off. And then like I said, the expansion vessel will literally just fall out of the boiler. So I hold the expansion vessel and bracket in place. Now this expansion vessel is full of water, so it is actually really heavy. So with my other hand now, I'm holding the expansion vessel because I don't want it to fall out of the boiler. And there you go, you can see how loose that is once that top bracket is removed. Once the bracket is removed, I can slide the expansion vessel out. Now this expansion vessel is 10 liters, and if it's full of water, that's gonna be 10 kilos. So like I said, these can be pretty heavy. But there we go, that's the expansion vessel removed from the boiler. Pretty straightforward. And like I said, sometimes the fiber washer is stuck on top of the pipe, like it is here, so I'm just removing it. And I'll throw it straight in the bin. Now I'm gonna refit the new expansion vessel, and this vessel just sits on a little bracket there at the bottom. And then once it's on that bracket, I can then fit the top bracket, and that's all that holds it in place. I'm keeping hold of the expansion vessel, although it's new, it is still quite heavy. And like I said, if I let go of it, it will just drop out of the boiler. So now I'm just locating that top bracket and doing up the two screws. Once I've got one screw in, it'll hold everything in place. Now I've not done that screw tight. I'm gonna leave it slightly loose until I've located the other screw. And there we go, I'm just fitting that second screw now. Check everything is lined up properly, which it is. And then I can do those two screws up nice and tight. And there we go, that's the bracket refitted. Again, pretty straightforward. Now all I need to do is to fit the new fiber washer and do up the nut. 
So I place the washer on top of the pipe and I just slide the pipe round so it goes underneath the expansion vessel thread. I want to make sure this is lined up perfectly. And there we go. Now I'm ready to do up the nut. But just before I do up the nut, I'm going to take a little bit of silicon grease and just wipe it onto the threads. Now I'm only putting this on the threads and it is just purely to help lubricate the thread so it ever needs to come off in the future. I know it's easily going to come undone. I don't have to do this, it's just something I like to do. I can now take the nut, slide it up the pipe and do it up onto the threads of the expansion vessel. Now sometimes these are a bit tricky to line up, but this nut's gone on pretty easily and I'm just doing it up finger tight where I can then use my adjustable spanner to nip it up. Now an important note, whenever I nip up this nut here, it also tends to twist the pipe. So I'm holding the pipe with my other hand so it doesn't twist and put stress on the plastic fitting below. I hope my video has been useful to you so far. I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos and products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everyone everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. And there we go, I'm just nipping that up. This doesn't have to be crazy tight, but not too loose that it starts leaking in the future. So there we go, fun last turn. And there we go, I'm happy with that. That's now all done up. So that's it, I've now replaced the expansion vessel. Now just before I top up the boiler, I'm going to check how much pressure is in this new pressure vessel. So I removed the cap and attached my pressure gauge. Now ideally this pressure vessel should be at one bar. But my pressure gauge is only reading about 0.6 of a bar. So I'm going to increase the pressure in the vessel to one bar. Now before I attach my pump, I always put a little bit of silicon grease inside the valve because these valves have a real habit of leaking. So that's my top tip. Although this is a brand new vessel, so it probably wouldn't be a problem. But when recharging older vessels, it can be a real problem. And a little bit of silicon grease works wonders. Now I've just attached the standard foot pump and I'm just pumping up the vessel and increasing the pressure inside it. Now I'm going to reattach my pressure gauge and check the pressure again. Now I can see that pressure is just above one bar, so I'm just going to adjust that down. And there we go, spot on. Now I can remove my pressure gauge and of course check to make sure that it's not leaking. And of course it's not so I can refit the cap. So that's the pressure vessel replacement completed. Now before I open up the two isolation valves, with the boiler drained down I can easily check the pressure sensor. So I'll turn the boiler back on. Now because there's no pressure in the boiler I should have F22 flashing in the display, warning me that there is no pressure in the boiler. If F22 isn't in the display, it means that the pressure sensor is overreading and the low pressure boiler shutdown of F22 is not working. If you want to know more about this pressure sensor overreading fault, then of course check out my video on how to fix F75, which explains exactly what the pressure sensor does. So now all I need to do is to top up the boiler and open up the two isolation valves. So I get my four millimeter Allen key bit, put it into the valve again and turn it quarter of a turn to open up. So that's the flow open and now I do the same on the return and now both the central heating valves are open. When the screwdriver slot is in line with the pipework, the valves are open. Now I just need to top up the system using the filling loop underneath the boiler. Now I open up the two valves and keep an eye on the pressure that's on the gauge. It hasn't got any numbers, but I'm looking to get it in the middle of the gray. And that's 1.5 bar. And this new valent boiler doesn't have to pressure gauge. It has this pressure reading on the side here. I like to call it a tank. And you want to get that black level indicator roughly in the middle of the two dotted lines, which is then round about 1.5 bar. If we press the button underneath the radiator symbol, it shows us the temperature that the boiler is set to for your central heating. Press it again. It then gives you the exact pressure that this pressure sensor is reading. Pressing the button underneath the back arrow will take us back to the normal display. With the Valiant Pro boilers, I need to use the filling loop. On the Valiant EcoFit Pure, the filling loop is slightly different. It's underneath the boiler again. 
and it's these two black handles just here that we are looking for opening up both these valves will let some more pressure go into the system so i've opened that one then i open this one and then whenever you top the pressure always just keep an eye on that pressure gauge just to make sure that you don't over pressurize your boiler and there you go you can see the pressure there rising up as i top it up to 1.5 bar and there we go one last thing that i need to do is to refit the air intake now i only removed it because i changed the pressure sensor i wouldn't normally need to remove it if i was just changing the pressure vessel now just in case you're wondering did the original pressure sensor need to be replaced because it turned out that the pressure vessel was faulty well i did refit it and check it and find that it was over reading and a little bit sticky so after checking with the homeowner i refitted the new one and of course if you want to know how to change a pressure sensor i made a video all about that and you can find that in the cards above now or down in the description so that's our job all finished and the boiler is back up and running again right that's about it then so if you want to know how i go about changing a pump you can click on the link just here if you want to watch my playlist with all the videos in i made the little link just there of course please give me a thumbs up share me with your friends subscribe ring that bell and as always my toolbox friend bye for now and i'll see you next time